Hey everyone, Kyle Bascom here. Today we're going to be replacing the auxiliary battery on this 2015 Mercedes C300. The procedure that we go through today is going to be applicable to just about every W205 C300. So we're talking the 2015 and newer uh, sedans. And if you have a convertible or a coupe from 2017 forward, this is also going to be applicable to that as well. The device that I'm calling an auxiliary battery may also be referred to as a parking pole capacitor or a voltage regulator because it's not actually the auxiliary battery. The main function of this battery is to activate the parking pole for the transmission in the event that the vehicle loses power. So if you notice an error message on your dash telling you to shift the vehicle into park but leave the engine running, or if you have the auxiliary battery malfunction, this could be the device that you need to, to replace. What we also recommend doing anytime you change the main battery in the vehicle, also consider changing your auxiliary battery as well. One thing to note, C-Class hybrid models do not have this style of voltage regulator or parking pole capacitor. They do have a standard uh, traditional uh, size 14 auxiliary battery. All right, so now that you know what we're gonna be replacing today, let's talk about the tools that are going to be needed to complete the job. Not a lot in the way of tools. Uh, you'll need a multimeter if you're going to be checking the condition of your vehicle battery. Uh, you always want to be working with a good light. You need a T15 Torx for the two fasteners in the interior of the vehicle that you'll be removing. I also recommend these quarter inch uh, deep socket, eight mil and 10 millimeter sockets, a quarter inch wrench, and then an extension or just something to prop uh, the vehicle carpeting. I'll show you when we're inside the vehicle. Now that we've talked about the tools we'll be using for the job, let's get right into the job. Okay, so um, everything we need sits behind this passenger footwell panel. We're gonna start by removing the mat um, to kind of manipulate the carpet and move it the way we need to. We're also gonna need to remove this panel. So just remove this first, uh, got some fuses over here and then just start pulling up. It's just, just held in by clips. And then you slide it out. There are normally two T15 screws, one here and one over here. Someone's been in here before, so one of the screws, uh, unfortunately, is missing. Uh, but that's what you can expect. That's just a metal self-tapping screw that's going in there. Uh, so when it comes out, it's not going to require a lot of force when it goes back in because if you're going into plastic, don't use a lot of force. So uh, now that the screw's out, I'm going to pull the panel down. There are clips here and here that I'm uh, attempting to break free. There we are. And there's an arm back by the um, blower motor. <sighs> Once you've freed this side of the panel, um, pulling the carpet back like this will help you uh, pull this panel down more. As you can see, uh, the interior uh, temperature sensors over here, I'm just turning it and then removing it and then for the interior lamp just pressing the tab and pulling it out and now this comes out okay so just getting this wire out of the way you're going to want this carpet down as much as possible to access a screw that's located here and over here um, which you can very easily feel what you're also going to want to do, which helps, is get something to keep this carpet down. Uh, so I'm going to grab this extension to make sure I don't mar my interior panels. I'm just going to get like a shop towel and put it over the head of that extension. All right, so now the carpet's held back and held down. It's not going to be fighting you while you're trying to work. There are two nuts in here. And right about here, which you are going to be able to feel. Uh, I'd recommend a deep socket 10 millimeter because it's, the nut sits on a stud. So that's just going to make sure that you have enough depth. So while I'm removing the nut, I just have a finger putting light pressure on the side of the flange. And you can see the flange will stay put and the nut will still turn. So if you do that, you're not going to lose it in a cavity down there. Even if it does slip off your finger and it gets lost, the moment you remove this panel, you will be able to easily fish it out. 
All right, the last one is pretty easy to see and crack loose. Not even gonna put my finger on that. Whatever happens, happens. Oh, actually, I can turn that the last turn or two and pull it right out. Okay, now we're gonna pull the panel forward. Rotate it out of here. This is your parking pole capacitor, voltage regulator, auxiliary battery, whatever you want to call it. It is retained with one eight millimeter nut up top. Just gonna grab it with my finger the last couple of turns. It's a little bit of a smaller fastener, so if it gets lost, probably won't be happy. All right, just slide it out. You've got one electrical connector. Press it down, it slides back ever so slightly, and then you're gonna press down on the tab again and remove the connector. When you're looking at this guy, if you look at the underside of it and there's any indication that it's been overheated or burning, so if it's like dark brown or black or anything like that, um, you may have also blown the fuse in the rear signal module. Um, so I'll show you where that's located in, in the trunk as well. But we're going to grab our replacement and throw it in now. This is the old regulator um, manufactured by Hella. The new OE regulator also manufactured by Hella. One comes in a Mercedes retail box, one comes in a Hella box. Uh, that's why we recommend this. It's the same product as what we're pulling out of the vehicle. So I'm going to plug that connector in, pop it in place. You hear a nice audible click, you know you're good to go. I'm going to slot it here and then slide it onto the stud. I'll grab my 8 millimeter nut and just start the first thread or two. There we are. Then I'll do it by hand. With these, what I always recommend is you're just going a little more than finger tight. That's it. You really don't need much more than that. All right, so our new battery's in place. We're just going to start putting things back together now. All right, so we're throwing our panel back in. Uh, basically, what I'm looking for to orient things correctly is I'll be feeling around for the stud that's sticking up to make sure it goes into the slots here. As you can see, they're slotted with a lot of room to play around so that you can orient things correctly. I need to make sure my electrical connector for my light and for my interior uh, sensor, I think this is a temperature sensor, uh, it's out of the way so it doesn't get tucked behind there and then just kind of shove things down in there all right so up, up top i'm kind of in a good spot uh at the bottom i don't believe i am so i'm just feeling around for the stud feels like i'm gonna have to lift up a little bit and back that one's in place Same on this side, I'm lifting up. Basically, you're just feeling for the stud and then you're aligning those slotted holes. It's gonna make perfect sense when you're in there. I'm tacking these three fasteners in first, uh, just so that they're in place. And then I'll start tightening things down. I tried to get it started with the tool. It's much easier to just do it by hand. And then the last one, all right, that's all nice and snug. Now we can start um, feeding the carpet back into place. So I'm gonna re remove my prop, grab my electrical lines, push the carpet back. Our under uh, glove compartment panel, just look out for this arm. Wow, you can really tell someone's been in there before. This locator arm has been through the ringer. Okay. I'm going to get my temp sensor plugged back in. My harness connector for the lamp, the interior lamp, that's in. And then just start to slide things into place. What I'm trying to do is get this guy as far back as I can and tucked under the carpet towards the back. Okay, what I'm having a little trouble doing, uh, I'm trying to make sure everything's aligned correctly 
and that the clips are falling right back into their respective homes. And also you saw me reach behind there, making sure that the arm that I pointed out uh, isn't hitting the blower motor housing. There we are. So everything is aligned correctly now. Um, yep, I've got my hole for my T15. And that should give me no trouble to go back in. If it's not aligned correctly, things are not going to slide into place properly. Your hole for your fasteners are not going to be in the correct spot. Uh, so keep finagling it until everything's lined up correctly. Don't try to force the screw in if things aren't lined up properly. Again, you don't need this extension. I like the knurled piece here. It's just giving me a little extra grip. It's literally the only reason why I'm using it. That's nice and tight. I don't even need to come back in with the tool on this one. That's snug. Uh, if you use too much force, you'll crack this panel. All right, so I've got this panel here, what I'm looking for, this arm. Uh, just gonna make sure I guide it into that white arm, this guy here. Get all of my clips lined up correctly over here. And then once they're lined up, everything should kind of pop into place. The very last clip over here doesn't feel quite right, so I'm just gonna lift it up to see what's going on. Press it back down. All right, that's in there. I really wanted to um, get a more reassuring click over here, but I can see everything's lined up and fitting nicely, so we're good. And then the last two things, we're gonna close our fuse box cover, just like that, and throw our interior floor mat back in place. This one does not have the locators, so as long as everything looks like it's lined up correctly, you're good. So as you can see, this can be accomplished in about 10 or 15 minutes. Doesn't require much in the way of special tools and something you should absolutely consider tackling. All right, so now we're gonna hit the trunk. Uh, what I referred to at the intro of the video um, was a fuse at the rear signal module that you may wanna look out for if the auxiliary battery is all burned up. So I'm removing this false floor. This is the signal module I'm referring to. So you've got a bunch of relays and fuses. Um, this is gonna be your fuse map. The fuse specific to the circuit that we're referring to is um, fuse number 448. However, uh, knowing that isn't enough, obviously these positions are not uh, labeled or legibly labeled, I should say. Um, this guy right here, this 10 amp fuse is your number 448. If you're having difficulty finding it, Mercedes provides you a nice fuse map. shows you all of the different positions in the vehicle uh, where there are fuses. When we were in the cabin, we were looking at this guy here. In the trunk, we're looking at this guy here. Pull the light back a little bit. There you go. All right, and then in reference to that fuse box in the trunk, to find position uh, number 448, you'll see I have everything in the same orientation as what I see in the trunk. That's my guy right there, 448. So in this case, uh, some vehicles are optioned in slot 449 with a five amp fuse. In this case, that is empty. And then my next guy in slot 448 is the 10 amp fuse. Uh, pull it out, if it's burned up, replace it. And if you do have error codes, you may have to clear them out of the module uh, using a tool like the Autel that we have and then you're good to go. You shouldn't have any more error messages on your instrument cluster. All right, everyone. So as you can see, changing the auxiliary battery on this C300, not a bad job at all. Things to keep in mind, like I mentioned, if this guy's burned up, check that fuse in the trunk. Uh, additionally, if you're changing your main battery, also consider changing this at the same time. They're fairly problematic. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments below, like and subscribe.
Thanks for watching.